the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, the racing capital of the world on a day that is warm, very humid, and dripping with tension and drama down along the pit lane and back in the paddock. It's bump day as the field of 33 for the Indianapolis 500 mile race will be squared away. The first of 35 cars. First, here is Oriol Serbia, the 43 year old native of Spain, now living in Los Angeles, driving a third car for Ray Hall Letterman Leonard in racing, but partnered with uh, one of the top sports car racing teams in the country, Scud Scuderia Corsa out of Los Angeles, veteran of fielding Ferraris. He's up out of the groove. <laughs> and he decided it was better to take his foot off the throttle. Now, the four lap average for that is done. So at that point in time, for me, I would probably be coming in to see what we need to do to change that. Just wave, yeah. just wave it off and forget about it, right? That was a bad case of push. And push is when you turn the steering wheel, the car just doesn't want to turn. And it's, it's directly related and tied to your heart rate because your heart rate yeah. goes up. I think up. he's going to stay out. Well, if nothing else, give it another run into turns one and two and see if it does the oh, same thing was again. A, or if, that yeah, was a 2,000, uh, oh. 2000 a 201. That won't, that won't make it. No. Sounds weird to say, huh? 200 miles an hour is not good enough. <laughs> I, I remember when Sneva cracked the 200 miles an hour. Special day for sure. We see him continuing around here, so your mind starts to wonder why. Well, maybe there's some impending rain coming in. You're not really too sure, but more so, if other drivers go out and have a problem, they've had their first attempt, they end up hitting the wall or something of that nature, then they don't have, obviously, a four-lap average speed. So maybe their thinking is, let's just put this in the books and get it done. Well, and Oriol Servia just did wave off the rest of his qualifying run, the team choosing to call it off so no time recorded by Oriol Serbia and an interesting last uh, 15 or 20 minutes here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and yes there it is uh, the uh, the radar looking like that closing in on us here in Speedway Indiana the uh, weather app that I like for its reliability and predictability says light rain in six minutes or so which could be interesting Jan Yes, and you documented the situation for Oriol Servia, and as you can see, they have just arrived at the garage area. He's yet to take off his helmet, but I have had an opportunity to speak with the team. Oriol said on the radio that the car bottomed heavily. They feel that maybe something has broken on this car because they have not changed it since yesterday, and Oriol was quite comfortable with the car at the time. He's now debriefing with the engineering staff. We'll take a quick run in there and see if we can get a comment from Oriel. Oriel, you said on the radio bottoming, you think something has happened with the car? Uh, we don't know. We're going to figure that now. I mean, we had a perfect run in the morning. The car was awesome, and we didn't touch it. We just put some wax. So I don't know. Maybe the conditions change a little more than we thought. Um, but, man, that, that opened my eyes out there. I had, like, a couple of big moments. And then I just wanted to stay out and put a, a time in in case it rains. Uh, and a couple cars, you know, crash or something. At least we had a time in, but I guess they thought we were too slow, which I understand. All right, so they will look this car over carefully. The whole team back here in the garage area. Now remember, anytime you go to the garage area and you find something, in order to get back in line, you have to fully Whoa. go back through tech. Oh, oh, oh. Jan, as you were talking about that, we just saw his car wiggle on the entry on the way in. So I don't know. I've crashed when I'm young. I've crashed when I'm old, and it hurts a lot more when I'm older. So I'm not sure I'd want to stay out there. Well, you see the umbrellas there. That's James Hinchcliffe. Uh, looking to stay dry in his car. The umbrellas have gone up. You can see the rain beginning to fall. The track is dry and we are ready to resume qualifications on bump day for the Indianapolis 500 mile race. A two hour and 21 minute delay for rain that occurred after 10 cars had completed their runs. And now James Hinchcliffe strapped in to his Arrow Honda for Schmidt-Peterson Motorsport about to be given the signal to take off out onto the track and begin his warm-up laps. And until it started raining, uh, again, two hours and 21 minutes later, the track has been dried. Uh, the sun has uh, peaked back out to help speed that drying process. And we are now ready to go for the resumption of bump day.
So here is James Hinchcliffe, the 31-year-old out of Toronto, looking to make the field for his seventh Indianapolis 500-mile race. Hinch comes into this race, fifth in the championship for the Verizon IndyCar Series, but more importantly, the focus here all about winning the 500 as he takes the green flag to set off. You're, you're a driver, Eddie and Scott. You've been sitting around for two and a half hours. You were the next guy in line to go. Some antsiness, some uncertainty to be the first one to take the track? Well, what's happened, obviously, since they were getting ready to run this morning is that it rained. And that little bit of rubber that had accumulated on the track has now been washed off. And when you're the first one, you never know if it's completely dry. You hope it is, you think it is, but you don't have any choice but to go out there and just put the pedal all the way down and hold on. And when you say pedal all the way down, that's what you do in turn one for your first flying laps, your first time lap. Your foot is flat on the gas, as you mentioned, Eddie, and you modulate it to bending and how the car is handling for you. So with James, a lot of experience, previous pole sitter here before. Obviously, he's had the big accident here. This racetrack, he knows, plays no favorites and sometimes can be very, very bad for you. So for him right now, the speed is all that he's going to worry about and trying to make sure that he makes no mistakes and just runs his line perfectly. Now, Hitch has not had the best of solo speed in the practice we saw yesterday on Friday. Those no-toe laps, he was 23rd fastest. Uh, so now to string four of them together out there by himself under those green conditions uh, that we discussed before is uh, is a bit of a challenge on the other hand the reality is yes you want to make the fast nine but you just have to make sure you beat two cars and assure yourself a place in the field at this point with this run if there are question marks surrounding what you're doing you are absolutely right your prime objective right now is to make sure you get into the field and like you said there's two cars that are going home and it's just the smallest bobble the smallest as as scott said on moving the throttle around can cost you a mile and a half and in, as competitive as it is it's going to be that close and you can tell by looking at the line of his car right now he has a little bit of push towards the end of the corner and what that means is the front of the car is not doing what it wants it to do and so when i talk about you want to make sure you beat two cars right now hinch is not doing that he is tracking as the slowest of the cars to have finished their runs there's sam schmidt the owner of hinch's car as well as two others that are looking to be in the field for the 500 and that's got to be a little bit worrisome. Now you sit here and you say to yourself, okay, have the track condition slowed down? Is everybody else that goes now going to be slower than those guys earlier? Will I get a chance to make another one later on today? What, yeah, I mean, I, I can't imagine how quickly the mind spins when you watch these numbers come in and they're not what you need them to be. But the driver does not need to have that in his mind. The only thing you need to be thinking of when you're in that car is let everybody else worry about the strategy. Your job is just to go as fast as you can. Then when you come in, the engineers will figure it all out. And so the slowest of the 11 to complete a run, James Hinchcliffe, again, Oriel Serbia, uh, did not complete his qualification attempt earlier on today. And so on track now is one of the drivers who is no doubt enormously antsy, James Davison who had an accident yesterday. You see everyone is guaranteed one four-lap attempt on this bump day of qualifications. The fastest 33 make the race. Everybody's time's then wiped out, and they re-qualify tomorrow to set their actual grid position. But first, you've got to make the grid. Davison with a crash yesterday. His team worked all night long to repair this car. We spoke with him this morning. Extremely sore when you have hit the wall here at the Speedway and you come back the next day and you're sore and you're stiff. If you've ever been in a car accident, you can just imagine what these guys are like after they crash here. And then you gotta get back in the car and you gotta go again. It cannot be uh, the most comfortable of feelings. I've often said as we watch his crash from yesterday, if anybody's ever been to a chiropractor, it's like getting a thousand chiropractic treatments all at once. The back end of the car becomes loose. He goes around and hits the wall. Now, for a lot of drivers here, yes, they're very fit. He goes into the very tail end of what we call the safer barrier, steel and foam energy reduction. So you can see that wall move just a little bit. Helps absorb some of that impact for him. Yes, he's able to step out of the car. But as you mentioned, Alan, when we spoke to him this morning, as he's getting high there on the exit, he is very sore just from yesterday. I've had that where I've hit the wall. I couldn't get back in the car the next day because I had such a huge crash up in turn four. I wasn't cleared until the day following. So it's an extra day to work in your mind. When you have an accident, boy, you wish there was another car ready for you right away where you can get right back in and get going. It's almost like falling off a horse and getting right back on. 
I don't fall off horses because I don't ride horses. <laughs> there you go. Uh, so Davison again uh, needing to track ahead of at least a couple of cars uh, to make sure he's in the, uh, the top 33 today. And right now is tracking well, a little bit better there at the instant that jumped up to ninth quick. So that would be a really tremendous thing for them to come through and file out of this qualification run his first laps on the track since crashing this car making the cut line uh, you're, you're absolutely right i want to go back to what you were talking about before about the physical soreness yeah physical soreness you can deal with it's when something gets into your mind and you don't know why you spun 230 miles an hour turning into turn one the hardest thing of all is to put that to one side and just believe blindly that your car is going to make it this young man has a lot of passion Yes. And you can see it coming through today, and he's driving it as hard as it will go. He has not taken his foot off the throttle, if you look at the, the chart there. And he's on a good run. He's Right now, he's tracking to be just ahead of the ones that are going home. Lost some speed there. And let me correct myself. I knew it was wrong as soon as I said it. He did get a few laps in this car this morning in the morning warm-up since it was repaired. These are his first laps in the car since the crash. Now he's dropping so back. Checkered flag is up. Lost some speed on that last lap, and it might be enough to knock him back out. It's going to put him 11th out of 12 to run. He's just ahead of James Hinchcliffe. And again, with Oriole Serbia down the bottom of the list, having not completed a run. Down to Rick DeBruel. Yeah, and we're standing by with James Hinchcliffe. Obviously, can't be happy as a result of that run. And let's talk about how much did the conditions changing affect your ability to go fast? Yeah, I mean, it certainly doesn't help. You know, we actually went out with considerably hotter track temps than uh, than what we originally had. Um, you know, these engines are very sensitive to atmospheric conditions and with the humidity going up and, and having the temperature going up, and there's nothing you can do to the cars. You know, they're you can't plug into them. You can't do anything to them once they're in line there. So who knows? I mean, we haven't been fast nine quick all month. We weren't expecting that, but um, we definitely weren't expecting what we just saw. So obviously, we got a lot of work to do. We still have to get in the show, which is pretty disappointing. Once again, James Hinchcliffe definitely not happy with where he's at right now, hoping he gets another run in. Back live at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway on bump day. And that driver just taking the green flag is Connor Daly, the hometowner, the 26-year-old from the Indianapolis area, looking to make the field for another Indy 500, what would be his fifth, driving an entry fielded together by Dale Coyne Racing and Tom Burns, local uh, area businessman. If it looks familiar, the paint scheme, the United States Air Force Recruiting Command is one of the sponsors on the car. Doesn't that look like one of the U.S. Air Force Thunderbird planes flying down the track? Pun intended. <laughs> it looks cool. And for young Connor, a boy that has really paid his dues throughout running not only in Europe, but here in the United States. And I talked to him during the open test here, and he's a selling driver, as I'm going to call it, because he's out there on the phone during the week talking to prospective sponsors, as you see his father, Derek, on the right-hand side. Derek used to race against uh, you, Eddie, in Formula One. And uh, without a doubt, a driver with a lot of talent. I hope he gets into the show here. He was a little worried about that. But, uh, Jan, you have more? I do, and one of your favorites, Scott, Robert Wickens, of course, Canadian now taking your first shot at qualifying for the Indy 500. Obviously, James, your teammate, didn't have a good run. Could you learn something from that that might help you? Yeah, we, we've communicated, but, uh, you know, when you're here, you've got, everyone's gone through tech. You kind of have to run what, what you put in here. So we'll see how it goes. Hopefully, uh, you know, it goes better better than his. And But, uh, yeah, so far this whole week, you know, my Lucas Oil crew has been doing a great job. Everyone at Schmidt Peterson Motorsports has been working hard. So hopefully we can try to get into the fast nine and, play play for fun tomorrow all right so he's done the simulations but now it's all for real Alan all right now thanks white flag for Connor Daly back there in bubble range big drop the last two laps this first one was a 224 and his last two laps have been a 222 it is a very difficult thing to come here and put together a program a short program they call it um, an add-on car for a team and they have struggled to find some speed out of this car. Not done yet, but given the rain delay that we had earlier today, the chances of getting another crack or two at it might be limited. And expecting to find three miles an hour in the next few hours is a, 
as a stretch. That is the slowest of the drivers who completed their runs, and the speeds fell all the way down to 221 on that fourth lap, so a 222 four-lap average for Connor Daly. Downstairs at the center of the bullseye with some of that rain, if you will. What I liked about that interview is he got right to the point quickly and moved on and yeah. went and started heading back towards the engineers. Just like he did. Well, he has been the class of the rookie class so far, although he's no ordinary rookie. Robert Wickens of Guelph, Ontario. Going the same speed as everybody else. He obviously has a lot in his mind right now because, as we mentioned, his teammate, James Hinchcliffe, did not get much speed out of the car. And, yes, you can get information from your teammates, as we know. But as has been reported, once your car is in that line to get out onto the racetrack, once it's been through tech, you cannot make any changes. So not whatever he has, he's running. Not without pulling it out of line and going back to tech. But at this point, well, you're not with the weather today. around us yeah. and the clock ticking, you want to make sure you get your qualification attempt right. in. And done. Yes. And then if the, if the chance goes to go back out like Marco Andretti was talking, then you go back through and do what you want to do and try and get it through tech and back out to the grid. But there's an if attached to that. The weather's yes. nasty. It's yes. So first lap for Wickens, 226.387. Yellow flag. Raindrops hitting one of the safety trucks in a corner of the speedway. And when you're doing 225 miles an hour, with slick tires on the car, that's not something you want to drive through. Those two things don't mix well. Yeah. Well, that's so think about all the, all the anticipation, <laughs> I know, right? I know, that's what I'm thinking about right now. Oh. And, and the first lap is normally the hardest one to get off yeah. because the car's not warm, the tire's not warm. So he had that out of the way. Yep. And he was ready to finish his last three, and he gets stopped on his Try second. to get into sequence, try to get smooth, yeah. and just to make sure you hit your points, and all of a sudden you're going, really? Really? We'll wait and watch for a moment. Red flag out at Indianapolis. The sun is back out at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. On bump day, the drama and tension of setting the 33 who will compete in next Sunday's Indianapolis 500 mile race heightened by two rain delays and now a compression of time for drivers to scramble to make sure they're in the 11 rows of three next weekend. We, but the big story is at the bottom of the grid where there are 35 drivers competing for 33 starting spots. Oriel Servia has not yet made a qualification attempt. He had a bobble on his opening lap of his run earlier today, so he has not gone. He's waiting for the other 11 drivers to finish qualifying and hoping that weather stays away from us so he has a chance to try and be in the Indy 500 field. Big learning curve, but he's a lot faster than his teammate Hinchcliffe was, who did only 224.7. Only 224 miles an hour. Checkered flag, Robert Wickens is across. Wickens will slot in and check on his numbers when we come back. Back live at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway on bump day, watching Pippa Man, originally from England, now from the United States, former winner in the Indy Light Series on the road up to the Verizon Indy Car Series, looking to make the field for the 500 for what would be the seventh time Pippa, when we spoke with her yesterday, really, 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 really yes. stressed because they have struggled to find some speed from this car and they know that they're, you know, where they are in the qualifying line and the bumping process and so on. If you haven't found the speed by the time you get to the end of Friday night, it's going to be really hard to cook something up overnight. So she is riding the bubble here. You see 29th right now with just a few cars left to go before people will begin re-qualifying to try and go faster than she is. We cannot know anything about her car from here other than the line she's taking, but I've been staring at that throttle pattern. She has not lifted her foot off the throttle one iota, so she's driving it as fast as it can go. Checkered flag is up for Pippa Man. The four lap average, 224.360. That is 30th out of 31 that have gone with just a few more left to go. And then the requalifications begin. Tough spot right on the bubble for Pippa Man. And the bumping has begun. Connor Daly has been bumped out of the field. Oriel Servia also out of the field. And now Servia is onto the track. So what's going to happen now, Al, is they're going to start throwing darts at the board. They're going to start, well, we tried that. That didn't work. Let's try this. 
and those things rarely function. They don't work. And like what, one in ten will work. And what the engineers tell you and the team managers tell you before you get in the car, they say it should yeah, do right. this. Not First, it does. <laughs> yes. Jan? Yes, the issue with Oriol Serbia, when you talk about engineers telling you what the car should do, they believe that the tire pressures did not come up enough for the right height. In other words, the car was dragging on the ground, bottoming, which was the radio conversation that Serbia had on this earlier run. We don't see the car bottoming at this point, so if the tire pressures come up and he gets the balance back, he should obviously have a much faster run. Of all the Rahel drivers, he was the one that has been the most confident throughout the month. You know, follow up something that Jan is talking about. When you go out there, and Jan drove here also, the car goes out, just sort of skims over the road just a little bit because the chassis is so low down to the ground. And as he talks about those tires getting warmer and the pressure's building, the car rises off the ground a little bit. It will no longer hit. And if you miscalculate on that, which it sounds like they did, you cannot have the car bottom because the car will certainly go out of control. Boy, he, had his, he has his work cut out from now. He just hit a 2.23. He's got, he's got to do some mega laps to get this. So, Connor yeah. Daly is out of the top 33. Pippa Mann is on the bubble, and that's who Serbia is trying to run faster than. Mann's four lap average was 224.360. Every lap you don't do at that pace it makes it more difficult to catch up. Second lap, twenty should be first lap, 221. So he's, that's out. You can forget that. Sounds a bit harsh, but there is no way he's going to manage to get that average up to 225. Well, when you think about his two teammates between Sato and Rahal, remember, they ran in the 225 range. So he was probably hoping just to be able to match that, to be close to the tail end, just, by, just to get in. What, what I find shocking is all these cars are new, and Rahal has probably some of the best equipment in this series. How can their car be that much slower than uh, Bourdais' car? Well, same engine, some, same chassis. Some, sometimes, you know, you start down a, a, a road, yeah. uh, an engineering road or a, a, a direction with what you're doing, and it takes you some time to realize that maybe that's not the road you want to be on. Well, they don't have much time to figure out which exactly. map to follow. And but it, well, think in of this the case, people that have not made this race. Ray yeah. Hall, his father, Bobby, it happens, right? not made it before. I, I, Penske team's not made it before. I, I'm responsible for that one, for his dad going home. Oh, well, I, I'm, I'm, not still, gonna... I'm still troubled by that. Not that much you are. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I know you better than that. <laughs> so this is not fast enough to get it done for Oriol Serbia. Right now, he is tracking uh. to put up the slowest four-lap average of the 35 cars. There's the white flag. Third lap will be down at 217. Sounds like it's kind of weird to say down at 217, but should be up in the, the at least the low 220s to mid 220s by the third lap to have any shot we talk about those speeds, we're talking about the length of a football field in well less than a second. They've waved the yellow. He's waved, his team has waved the yellow flag and called this off. So they want time in the remaining time. Yes. So, so Serbia still doesn't have a recorded qualification time. They want time to bring that car back in, throw another dart at it, like you said, Eddie, push him back to the front of the qualification line with no time and get back out on the track again because it wasn't happening there. Alan, there's just not enough time to come up with a mat. You can't just wave magic dust on it and it'll go four miles an hour quicker. Well, that's, the, that's where I really feel for drivers in these moments because they, you know, you want to do everything you can. I've been in that position. It's, it's a horrible place to be because you will take risks that normally you would never take. So there's the qualification line. Nobody in the fast lane on the concrete nearest the wall. But the driver who just left that lane to go onto the racetrack is Connor Daly. His team withdrawing his time. He's outside the top 33 anyway, so they've got to go out. Excuse me, and try again. The 26-year-old local product looking to see if they can find a little more speed. Pippa Mann is on the bubble. James Hinchcliffe is next in 32nd. So we will see if Daly can squeeze a little more out of this run than he had on the one before. Unlike last year's cars, the majority of the downforce that these cars produce are produced with the underbody wing. 
And I think a lot of people are struggling trying to figure out what they can do aerodynamically to take some drag. Drag is, is, is the negative of downforce. It's the cost of pushing something through the air. And these cars inherently have a lot of, a lot of drag. So every time you try to take downforce off, it doesn't seem to work. And I've oversimplified a very complicated concept. But in the past, we knew what to do. You would just take out rear wing. And if you could hold on and put the belts on tight enough, you'd make it. So Connor Daly is showing improved speed from his first run so far. 225-2. But as you can see by the tracker, it's not in any way comfortably above the cut line. But Alan, a car that's not handling well will burn through its tires much quicker than a car that is well balanced, like what Ed Carpenter was talking about. So he's putting a lot of pressure either on his front tires or his rear tires, and they will start to degrade. And a car tire that's degrading at 230 miles an hour is no fun. That is Connor's mom. I saw his dad before. Really, we talked to her yesterday morning watching him struggle to try and make the race. That's how much it means to everyone involved. Well, their whole family has done everything they can to get him in this car. And if willpower will do it, his mom has a lot of that right now. One lap to go. That one at 224.4. His average needs to stay above 224.360. That's what Pippa Man posted, but that would only get him back onto the bubble the track and you know the fourth lap is always the most difficult because as you're talking about when the tire is going away eddie you have to make sure you run the perfect line and right now his lines seem to be picture perfect he just hopes that the car has enough speed let's see what Checkered he does flag for connor daly and it will be up into 33rd Four lap average, 224.736. Pippa Man is bumped from the field. And we're getting down to it on bump day here at the Brickyard. Oriel Serbia now beginning his third attempt to qualify for the Indianapolis 500. Connor Daly is on the bubble. If a man has begun strapping back into her car, Jan, what have they done to this 64 to try and rub a little magic into it? Well, you heard Eddie talk about the magic dust. What they're trying is a little higher tire pressure, about one and a half PSI all the way around. They've taken some front wing out to take some of the downforce because Oriole said the car was loose and also adjusted the ride height. So three big changes. We'll see if, in fact, that turns out to be magic dust. Loose meaning the back end of the car wanted to come around. The front had more grip than the back. So trying to balance that out, take a little of the grip out of the front and see if you can get a little speed. <laughs> and that's the worst. Yeah. Loose around Indy is not a good place to be. What you want is you want a car when you get at the end of the corner, the front's getting a little bit light because you can tune that out. But when you start turning into the car, into the corner, and the back starts sliding, those are the worst accidents to have because you lose control and there's nothing you can do but just ride it. He needs to be faster on his four lap average than 224.736. That is where Connor Daly sits, no doubt nervously. And a 223.2 warm up is pretty good. Boy, these new cars must be really difficult to tune. I've never seen so many troubled faces after practice as I have in, at every race we've been to this year. And this is no different. But like they say, it's the same for everybody. It's massaging the car with the engineer's knowledge to get it to the driver's liking. The balance that we hear the drivers talk about is a car that doesn't have understeer, doesn't have oversteer. It goes through the turn just as nicely as they can as we're going to watch. Good lap. There we go. It's a 225.4, as you can see. That's a big jump from what yeah, we've done before. A big jump. Now, the consistency that you've been talking about, Eddie, we've only seen the Penske cars really start to increase their speeds as the runs go on. Right now, it's tuning to track conditions with the available cockpit adjustments the drivers have to make sure the car stays at that speed. Whatever they did is working because he is a lot smoother than he was before. And I guarantee you, his heart rate's down about 30%. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Second Another lap, one. 225.236. You see the tracker, the yellow number on the ruler, is showing that right now Serbia is in 29th place. 
Man, this, he's got about a foot left on the track. And so this is, and I'm looking at you and I say this, and I think you know where I'm going to go. This is when you're counting the turns. Uh, Two more laps, four true. turns per lap, and you're counting the, the turns off going, okay, well, seven doing more it. turns. He's doing it. He's doing it. Ray Hall's engineers have maybe have figured something out. Now, on his second attempt, his third lap was only 217.9 miles an hour. This time, the number is 225.4. So they have found some magic in that wing and air pressure adjustments that Jan was detailing for us a minute ago. That was great reporting. To be able to get that out, to get that out of an engineer, <laughs> you were saying? That doesn't happen very often. <laughs> Boy, when he came out of the corner, he had a lot of steering in there, and he was into the gray. If you get too far into the gray, you just don't have any grip. There's nothing you can do. You see, he lost a little position on yep. the tracker. So now in 30th here, coming off his final corner. It's better be better than the 224 and a half. To the checkered flag with Connor Daly sitting on the bubble. Oriel Serbia about to record his first completed qualification attempt today in 31st place. Daly is out. James Hinchcliffe goes down onto the bubble. And the clock continues to tick. 25, 27 minutes left to go in Bump Day at Indy. The uh, real difficult end of the business here as we run out these final 22 and a half minutes of Bump Day are these drivers scrambling to be in the 33 car field. Connor Daly outside of the 33, so they've withdrawn the time that they had set earlier. Moved up to the head of the fast lane, and here he is out onto the track to make yet again a third attempt to qualify for the 500. James Hinchcliffe is on the bubble. Four lap average of 224.784. Pippa Man also strapped into her car, and in that fast lane, Hinchcliffe's car is not in the fast lane yet. He's about third back in the protect your time lane, Jan. And for Connor Daly's team, they continue to search for little things to gain him a little gap. Yes, they do, of course. Both these two cars that are in the fast lane, Connor Daly, who just left the fast lane, now we see Pippa Mann rolling up. Obviously, both owned by Dale Coyne. Just spoke with him and said, we think we have an opportunity to run both these two cars twice before 550. We're going for it. We've made subtle changes for Connor. He didn't need too much. He thinks this may not be the last run for either car. They think they have more time to play with. Well, what that has to be like oh. for those drivers. I'm just thinking mentally taxing. Eddie, when you and I first got here, you had one run, and that was your run that you had to put yourself in the field. And wherever it was, that's where you qualified. Now with this multiple attempts, I don't know how the drivers sleep the night before. They always manage to find a way. They always manage. Let's see if he went any quicker. A little bit. Tracking 30th. But tracking it over four, four laps. Now, our track conditions coming to them. The track temperature has dropped a couple of degrees by that shadow across the front stretch, though exactly. it's still beaming down pretty brightly on turn two and turn three. When you're testing here before the Indy 500, as a driver, you just love it when that shadow starts coming down because you pick up so much grip in turn one and turn two. And the, the engine just runs better and the cars just get faster. So a lot of this right now in these last 20 minutes is going to be about finding yourself on the track at the last moment. I think you might be able to find that half, and a, half a mile that you need to get in. Okay. He is using a lot of road, guys. Early on. Yes. But... The lines look terrific. Love the way he sweeps up to the wall. I call it Rick Mears classic line. Gives himself a little bit more room on the exit of three that time. So Daly, his last run averaged 224.736. You see he's at 224.9 here with a couple of laps to go. James Hitchcliffe is 224.784 for a four lap average. But again, just topping that for Connor Daly is only gonna put him right back on the bubble. He really needs to be up closer to 225 miles an hour flat for the four lap average. Yes, and I think to do that, he's gonna have to start off with the 226 because every run he's done, he's gotten slower and slower every lap into the run. So he'll come here to see the white flag. One more lap to go in this qualification attempt. 
Tracking right at 32nd, 33rd. There really is nothing he can do right now to go any faster. No, he's flat out. He's exactly. giving, doing everything the car has, he's putting out there. You have to focus so much. You can't be stressed. You'll make a mistake. It's really like riding a horse, because a horse knows when you're nervous so close to the wall, the steering wheel on this race car knows if you're nervous also. Checkered flag for Connor Daly, 32nd. James Hinchcliffe is bumped. My goodness. I would have never said, Alan, starting the month that Hinchcliffe would have been on the bubble. And right away, the Schmidt-Peterson team moves that Hinchcliffe car from the line of protected times over to the withdraw your timeline, or they're trying to. They're having a conversation with series officials there. Well, he doesn't have a time anymore, so off he needs to go. Well, they just have to go through the, the oh, process. The technical stuff, you signing gotta, the paperwork. That's right. Yeah, so that business. Get the there officials down there, yep. sign the paper, turn it in, see, there you go. You think about a, a the whole month. about a previous pole sitter to oh. now just getting okay. bumped out. This track shows this no is, favoritism, does it? This is indie, baby. <laughs> it doesn't show favoritism to anybody. I remember one year watching all the Penske cars not qualifying. And the year before, they had won the race. That Dominated, was, right? Yeah, yeah one in 94, did yeah. not qualify in 95. Did, did not qualify. And the whole, all of the pits, all the teams moved down to see Penske try to solve the problem. And that time, they didn't. Right so, at the end of practice. So Hinch's team has signed the paperwork, withdrawn the previous time. Here they come into the fast lane, up toward the front of the line. They'll be the next car onto the speedway. Tip a man is on the track now, on the outside, looking in, seeing if she can bump James Davison out of the field of 33. Which would in turn put Connor Daly right back on the bubble. And on and on the angst goes until these next 16 and a half minutes go by. I would not discount Pippa. The more she runs, she tends to get, like everybody does, she becomes more confident. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm very curious to see how this run goes. But regardless of how it goes, she has a humongous amount of courage coming up here every year without doing any other racing in Indy cars and doing as well as she does at the Speedway. It's, it, she really needs to be commended. Well, not only for uh, being on the racetrack, but she does such a great job in the community because she lives here in Indianapolis. And every month you see her on television doing something lo locally, a lot of times with young girls and just proving that girls can go off and do follow their dreams. And when we spoke to her the other day, like Alan mentioned, she was just so stressed out that she might have to go into this exact scenario that she's in right now and have to try and requalify time and time again just to get into the field. First lap is a 224.3. She needs to top a four lap average of 224.798. So you keep an eye on that average mile per hour number to see whether man is in. And here's the thing, we're talking about fractions of a second. Right now, from 31st to 33rd. So what is the last row of the 500, the qualified cars? Over four laps, they're separated by 148 one thousandth of a second. 0.148. And, and yet it might as well be half an hour. You know? It's forever in its meaning. Yes. Now when you watch her car, she comes off the turn, you see a little bit of movement in the car that's costing her speed. She's not confident with the way the car is exiting the turn, and she sort of just tugs it back down. No, it just, it just does not look fast. She's got so much track left. She just doesn't seem to be carrying a lot of speed. And I'm going back to that throttle pattern again. She's been full throttle from the second she left the pits. And the third lap here, a little slower, lost a half a mile an hour. It's not gonna happen. So what ends up happening now is the car is not working for her. So she's turning the steering wheel more into the turn, scrubbing off speed. The car gets dragged down, the RPMs in the engine get dragged down. She can feel that as a driver. You know it just by what they call the seat of your pants. And she also gets confirmation every time she goes across the start and finish line because on her electronic dash, it tells her her lap time instantaneously. 
So this is not looking fast enough. And they have waved off the attempt. So Dale Coyne saying, nope, that's not going to get us in. Let's bring it back. Let's cool it down. Let's try something else. Remember, one of Dale Coyne's cars for days is P5. Yes. The same car, same engine, same pieces. So Pippa Man and company will have to come back and try again. So James Davison continues to sit on the bubble. James Hinchcliffe will be next on the track. 13 minutes and change left to go. Boy, I can feel the tension just oh. sitting here. He's trying to empty his head of everything, of everything. All he has to go out there and do is drive this thing as fast as he can and let it be what it's going to be. What I always did is when I left the pit lane right here, get through up under the track into turn one. There his parents. And turn two. Then I would turn around, a couple of deep breaths going down the back stretch, and try to relax. Easier said than done. I thought you were going to give me another horse analogy. <laughs> the 2016 pole winner. Amazing, amazing, and he's he's having to fight to get the last place on the grid. Now, remember earlier today when Hinch made his run, the one that they've just withdrawn the time from, he was the car sitting at the head of the line when the first rainstorm hit, and they sat there for two hours and 21 minutes, and then went out onto the racetrack to make his four-lap attempt. Uh, you heard his teammate, Robert Wickens, who was the first car out on the track after the second uh, Rick, something going on? I want to point out on the radio just a few moments ago as he was pulling out, first they had told him, weave from side to side, get some heat in the tires, we want you to do that for us. But immediately after he did that, he said, I've got a wicked vibration, a wicked vibration. He said it twice. Then a moment later he came back and said, wait, I think it's going to go away. And then he came back on last one last time and said, I think it's going to go away. Ooh. But now it looks like they're, they're still going to have a problem. And now they're talking about waving him into the pit box. They have done that, Rick. He's come onto the warm-up road, his crew running up the pit lane from the turn one end to the turn four end where that car will come. That's no short task, but the clock continuing to tick on James Hinchcliffe. Listen to this. Very, 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 very bad rotation. Vibration. Very bad vibration. You can hear that in his voice. Yeah. Copy, can you run here? You want to pit for another set of tires? Go it away, go it away. Copy, pit, pit. Oh, it's going away. Copy, going away. Now it's coming back. Chaos. As the clock uh. counts down on bump day at Indianapolis, we're back after this message and a word from your ABC station. But the real drama is here. After James, Hinch James Hinchcliffe got bumped and had to pull off because of a vibration, Pippa Mann's car got to the front of the line ahead of his, and that clock you see ticking down to the end of qualification. They're both at tech. They get to top their fuel to do the things they have to do before they get to the head of the line. So nobody's holding anybody up from anything for the moment. But will James Hinchcliffe even get a chance to get on the racetrack to try and get back into the field? The clock is ticking. At this point, it doesn't look good for Hinch. Neither of the two cars in the fast lane were at the head of the line and ready, so here's Alexander Rossi out on the track. He's in 16th position, trying to see if he can find a way to get into the fast nine. Will any positions change in these final six minutes? Back in Indianapolis, three minutes to go on bump day. James Hinchcliffe is two cars away from getting a shot to get on the racetrack. Fifth in the championship, entering this Indianapolis 500, a double points event. But Pippa Mann is ahead of him in line. Mann herself trying to find a way to bump into the 500. Rossi trying to find a way into the fast nine to have a shot at pole tomorrow. He's coming down to complete his four-lap qualification run. 
and has a shot at doing it. Checkered flag is up for the former winner. He'll miss it by a car. Tenth for Alexander Rossi. And Danica Patrick is in the fast nine. How about that for a return? Yeah. So two minutes left, and the track will become available to Pippa Man. And all James Hinchcliffe could do is sit, listen to his heartbeat, and watch the seconds tick away. But, but if Pippa Man goes out and she sees that she cannot better that time after a first or second lap, she has the option of coming in the pits. She does, but that time is going to be about at zero before she even finishes her warm-up laps and gets on, gets on that first lap before we even record that first time. You know, so the, the, the chances of it are pretty slim. Here's the rule for the end of, uh, of end of qualifying. Basically, the track has to be available to you. Uh, the car has to be running, and you have to be rolling when the qualifying period ends. Uh... If she's going to do it, we have to see what, not this lap, but the next lap. And there's only, there's one minute and nine seconds left. You know, it's interesting, guys, because this brings up a very interesting point that for the part-time racers that are here this month, they certainly get a chance to try and qualify for this event. But for the franchise holders, for the teams that run on a constant basis here in the IndyCar series, James Hinchcliffe being one of the drivers for the Sam Schmidt organization with Rick Peterson. Their car right now is sitting on the outside, not with the opportunity to get in. So that's, uh, that's going to bring up some consideration, I think. James Hinchcliffe is not going to qualify for this year's Indianapolis 500. Green flag, and Pippa Man has the final shot. Four laps to try and knock James Davison out of the 500 field. Davison's four lap average, 224.798. That's the number to beat for Pippa Man. Wow, what a day. Got it for Sam. That's a very big blow to his team. And for James Hinchcliffe. First lap for Pippa Mann, 223.9. Needs an average of 224.7. Almost 224.8. James sitting there in disbelief. Boy, oh boy. Her, her car does not have that speed in it. It takes months, Alan, to prepare for this race. Months of, of special projects, special cars. And for a team like Sam's to not have one of his lead drivers in the 500 is devastating. 223.17 as Mann continues to try and find a way to piece it together. But James Hinchcliffe will not be in the Indianapolis 500. No, it's what this day is all about. He had his chance earlier, did get a run in, didn't go fast enough. And you know that they are just devastated. White flag, James Davison sits on the bubble. As sore as he was from his practice accident yesterday, this is just as agony for him, watching, waiting, hoping. The relief may be on its way in about another 30 seconds. No, he's in. Goodness, from pole to not qualify. Final corners for Pippa Man. And final moments to set the starting grid for the Indianapolis 500. The 33 drivers that will be in the field. Checkered flag is in the air. And bump day is over. Man not fast enough. Pippa Man and James Hinchcliffe will not make the Indianapolis 500. James Davison will make the cut right on the number. Heartbreak for Hinch.
The drama, the excitement, the heartbreak of bump day at Indianapolis has just played itself out before our very eyes as uh, a fan favorite goes home while others scrape by and barely make the 500 by the tips of their fingernails. The dreamers who dream of being part of this great race uh, accomplish it by the slimmest of margins. I speak of Connor Daly and James Davison, who will take up the last two spots on the grid. We're watching four on ABC starting at four o'clock, and it was gonna be a real shootout tomorrow, Alan. And you see that bottom line, the two who don't make this year's Indianapolis 500. Just a moment ago, Jan Bikis spoke with James Hinchcliffe. James, I know a lot of emotions going through your mind right now. It looked like you were gonna have time, and at the last moment, you realized you did not. What's the thought process knowing that you thought you had the timing right on the previous run? Yeah, it's, um, I mean, it's devastating in every way possible. You know, we, uh, we got in line there and we had a tire vibration. I'm, I'm not exactly sure what the problem was, but, uh, you know, it's one of those things. Indy's, uh, Indy's a cruel mistress sometimes, you know, highest the highs, lowest the lows. But, you know, uh, everybody at SPM worked their tails off to get these cars ready. We have three cars in the show. Um, unfortunately, the fourth one didn't make it, but we win as a team, we lose as a team. It's, uh, it's crazy to be here after where we were two years ago, you know, but uh, we'll put our heads down. We'll, uh, we'll take a look at it. We'll definitely learn from this experience. It's a character builder for all of us, for sure. But uh, yeah, just disappointed. It's, you know, the aero car is, is fast enough to be in the show, no doubt about it. We got one of the best crews in pit lane. Uh, we've proved that on pit lane all year long. Um, it's just, it's a, big, it's a big blow for sure. You mentioned pole position in the past. A couple of years ago, what changed during that time? There's a new aero kit, but what else is different? I mean, you know, there's there's a lot of things. It's year to year, it's very different, you know. But uh, like I said, what matters is we came here with uh, with big expectations and high hopes, and you know, we uh, we knew over the month that we didn't have maybe fast nine speed, but we certainly didn't worry about being out of the show. And um, you know, we had a bit of a problem in our first run. The second run, it looks like the track was getting a little bit cooler, a little bit quicker, um, but we just had that problem and. Honestly, in the car, I thought the gun went at six, so I wasn't even really worried about it. Uh, and we just we just didn't get out in front of Pippa there, and it's uh, it's 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 the rules. It's how it goes. You know, we're not the we're not the first, you know, big name, big car to go home in this race. That's that's Indy. We finally have bumping again, which everybody was super thrilled about, and I'm a little less thrilled about it now than I was 24 hours ago. But uh, yeah, I mean, you gotta take uh, you gotta take your lumps here sometimes. Thank you, James. Thanks. For perspective, three years ago, James Hinchcliffe did not make this race because he was in a hospital bed fighting for his life after a crash. Here he didn't make the race, but he'll walk away just bitterly disappointed. There's the menu. Tomorrow, the run for the pole. We start with deciding positions 33 through 10, then the Fast 9 shootout here on ABC, leading up to the Indianapolis 500 pre-race show and telecast one week from tomorrow. Heartbreak for Pippa Man. Heartbreak for James Hinchcliffe. And up next on ABC World News or your local news except on the West Coast. The run for the poll tomorrow at Indy. What a day on Bump Day. We are now joined by Pippa Mann. Pippa, I know that today didn't go as you anticipated or hoped. Uh, but just take us through your day and uh, obviously the emotions that come with this. So um, coming into this May, I, we knew things were going to be tough. I'd, I often only get to climb in an Indy car w once a year with a new aero package, not getting to do any of the testing ahead of time because, you know, we, we, we don't have a budget that allows for that, despite all of the people who have supported me to be here. Um, Dale and Dale Queen Racing and the entire crew of guys on my car worked so hard to turn that car over from a road course car to an oval car so that we could shake it down and get me through my vet refresher on Tuesday. Wednesday and Thursday, I'll be honest with you, we thought things were going pretty well. Car handled great. It was really good. It was pretty good in traffic. We were, we thought things were rolling along pretty nicely. The no tow reports, it, it, they looked fine. And then yesterday morning, I rolled out, 226 out of the box. Great, like, this isn't bad, now let's trim the car. 
Nothing. Let's trim it again. Nothing. That's when we started to realize that we might really be in trouble here. Um, we tried everything we could think of yesterday. The boys stayed really, really late last night. Uh, we pulled bits of wrap off the car. We resanded the car. We sanded the floor. We went through all of the brakes again because we thought we found maybe we had some brakes that were dragging a little bit out there. Um, we, we were, you know, the, I knew that if everything we did last night still hadn't made her go faster, we were going to be in trouble today. But you have to try and get out there anyway. And when we got back in line for the last run, we trimmed, we took every single trim we could possibly do to the race car. It did everything. Um, obviously it wasn't enough. Um, What's worse, it was slower than our time before. But once you've pulled your time, if the car's still functioning, you, you, you kind of have to finish the run because, you know, what if somebody in front of me did, didn't get through tech and I withdrew and didn't complete my run and just pulled off the racetrack? That, that would make it so... It's the worst. I can see it's the worst feeling in the world. You know, the, the, the Donate Life team worked so hard. Earlier today, I really thought we were going to get it done, and then we went out for again the, the first run. And I knew we were in the fight, and the final trim we took at it further than any of our team cars have gone. You know, big stab. Let's. Slower? <sighs> if we understood what was going on, we wouldn't be here. Um. Now joined by James Hinchcliffe driving the number five Aero Electronics SPM Honda for Schmidt Peterson Motorsports. James, I understand that this is a very difficult situation. It's not how you hoped or expected things to turn out today. Uh, I just want to first start off by saying, you know, um, I, I, haven't, I haven't been on the internet. I haven't heard anything, you know, myself, but I've, you know, I've heard some stuff from other people. Uh, this is in no way Pippa Man's fault um, or anybody else in line's fault. This is our fault. So if there's anybody out there that's got anything bad to say about that, you don't know motorsports and keep your mouth shut. As far as our run, yeah, I, uh, I pulled out of the pits. You know, the, the track had been getting a little bit quicker, um, so we were pretty optimistic, to be honest. And uh, as soon as I left pit lane, I felt a, a horrible vibration, called it in, and weirdly, it kind of started to go away, and I thought maybe I just had some pickup on my tires or something. Um, so I called into the team. I said, no, I think it's all right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep going. And then as I turned into turn three, it all came back again, um, and it was, it, was, it was violent. And so came in, and, you know, we've since uh, – since diagnosed a, uh, a tire pressure sensor failure, it kind of broke off the rim and was rattling around inside the tire, which you know at 200 plus miles an hour doesn't doesn't feel good. So it, it, we had to come in. If we had stayed out, there's a good chance it could have caused a tire failure, and then you'd not be in the show and have a broken race car. So we did what we had to do to come in, and unfortunately, the way it all uh, worked out timing wise, there was uh, just not not enough seconds left in the day to get our last run in because for sure the aero car had the speed. Um, to be in the show, I mean, you know, not not the fastest car by any stretch this month, but we weren't expecting that. Um, but you know, certainly enough to be comfortable in the show, and just got it for all the guys on the team. Everybody works so hard. This race means so much to every single one of us that work in this paddock. You know, it's it's not unique to our team by any stretch, and uh, it's you know, it's obviously a pretty uh, pretty bummed attitude back in the uh, in the garage in the moment. But we're a strong group. You know, this track, believe it or not, has done worse to me in the past, and we came back swinging, so we'll be fine. Yeah, I mean, you know, tragically, the first one we did, we, we did find a problem with the car. We know exactly what, what took the speed away that we had yesterday. Um, so, you know, that that being rectified, we kind of expect, and, and, you know, the margin not being super big from our previous run to, to get in the show, um, you know, we were sort of expecting a bit of a jump in pace. I think Jack did a pretty decent jump in pace on his second run, uh, and he, he had a similar problem uh, to myself. So, um, yeah, pretty confident. It's one of those weird situations where, you know, for it being, 
after five o'clock on bump day and being out of the show, we were still actually relatively okay with it because uh, we had we had confidence in the package that we had at that time. At the end of the day, it's it, it, the rules are black and white. We knew, we knew the procedure going into it. We knew what we were getting ourselves into. Um, so it just it's just the chips didn't fall away, man. It's uh, there's not there's not a whole it's, it's not a whole lot more complicated than that, unfortunately. But yeah, if, if they look into changing it in the future, cool. We'll go by those rules and, and try and work that system to our advantage. Look, I, I'm not going to criticize anybody for going out and trying to, you know, improve their qualifying time. Um, you know, there are some guys that are trying to bump in the fast nine. There are some guys that, you know, maybe weren't really quite close enough to being in trouble that still went out, even though they had no chance of getting in the fast nine. Uh, but that's that's their that's their right. You know, they have every right to do that. Um, it's if there's any decisions to be made in terms of, you know, making, you know, letting those guys go out or not, it's way above my pay grade, and it's. Uh, <laughs> It's not something I'll ever begrudge anybody. It's nobody screwed us, you know. The system didn't fail us. We failed us, and we just have to do better. And, and I know this team is capable of better. We are better than this. I know that. Everybody in the garage knows that. We deserve to be in this race, but just not this year. Yeah, it, you know, there are, again, man. There are so many things that stacked up against us today, and uh, and that's the nature of the beast. That's you know, that's that's Indy. That's qualifying here. Um, at the end of the day, everybody got a run, which is the rule, and our run wasn't good enough. So you can say you can blame the weather, you can blame other cars in line, you can blame whatever you want, but it just just didn't happen today. Everybody's been hoping for a bump day since 2012. You know, it's uh, it's part of the excitement of this race. It's part of the tradition of this race. 33 cars start it. That's the deal. It always has been, bar a few extenuous circumstances examples. Um, so I'm I'm all for it. You know, it's. Sucks to be sitting up here and saying that at this point, but you know the the purist in me and the you know the motorsport enthusiast in me thinks this is good for the sport, and that's more important than what's good for James Hinchcliffe today. So.